Hello children, today I'm here to teach you chapter 23 in your textbook, Data Interpretation. Last chapter we did data collection and representation. So in this lesson we are interpreting data represented in picture graphs and tables. So what is this? This is a table. So we are trying to describe data pattern from tables and picture graphs. So that's called data interpretation. So we are trying to explain data using a table or a picture graph. So data interpretation from table. So look at this table. You have given months and number manufactured. So this is about bicycles of a bicycle manufacturing company last year. So we'll see What's the information given there? So here, when you look at the table, what can you see? You can see this is the highest one. And here, March is the lowest one. So you can interpret data from the table. So we'll look at it. How many bicycles produced more in February than January? So that means you have to take the difference between the number in February and January. So what's the number manufactured in February? That's 13,500. And what about the number manufactured in January? That's 12,400. So if you want the extra amount you have to take the difference so what we do we subtract these two numbers so subtract you get here 5 minus 4 1 and 3 minus 2 1 so what's the value extra number of bicycles in february is 1100 take a look at this question find the total number of bicycles manufactured in me and you Total means you have to add the two values. First refer the table and see number manufactured in May. So in May, that's 16,700. Then number manufactured in June, that's 20,340. So if you want the total, you add these two together. So what's the total number manufactured? Zero, zero plus four, four. Seven plus three, ten. And you take one to the next level. Six plus one, seven. Two plus one, three. So what's the total? Thirty-seven thousand forty. Look at this question. Find the ratio between number of bicycles manufactured in February and June. So we'll see what's the value in February, 13,500. Then June, 20,340. So these are the two values. So we need to simplify this. So what you do, we can check the common factor and we can simplify further. Here we can see zero is there. So you can divide by 10. So when you divide by 10, that means this zero get cancelled out. So what's the number you are getting? 1350 here. Here you get 2034. Now, how you simplify? You can divide this by 9. 9 times 1, 9. 4 remaining, 45. That's 9 times 5. So you get 150. Divide this by 9. 9 times 2, 18, 2 remaining. So for 23, 9 times 2, 18. 18 and 5, you get 23. So 54, 9 times 6, you get 54. Now again, you can see, you can divide this by 2. Divide this by 2, 150 divided by 2, you get 75. And here, 1, 1, 3. So we can't simplify further. So we call this is the simplest form. So what's the ratio between 
bicycles manufactured in February to June 75 to 113. Look at this question. Find the difference between the highest and the lowest number of bicycles manufactured. So we have to look at the highest number. That's in June. 20,340. So what's lowest number or least number? So that's, when you look at the table, that's in March, 11,800. So if you want the difference, you take the subtraction. Now subtract these two. Zero, four minus zero is four. Then 13 minus eight, that's five. So this becomes nine, nine minus one, eight. So here one minus one, zero. So what's the total? 8,540. So you can add and see whether you get the previous number. So when you add it, you get 20,340. So that means this is correct. Look at this question. Find the total number of bicycles manufactured in both March and April. Total means you have to take the addition. So number in March, 11,800. Number in April, 14,900. So we'll take the addition. 0, 0, 8 plus 9, 17. So take 1 here. 4 plus 1, 5. 5 plus 1, 6. 1 and 1 becomes 2. So what's the total number? 26,700 bicycles. Now another table. The shirts manufactured last year in a certain company shows in the table below. 16, 15, up to 2011. Which year had the least number of shirts manufactured? So what's the lowest number here? So you look at the number of shirts and see which one is the lowest. This number. That means 2011. Which year had the highest number of shirts manufactured? Look at the table and see where you get the highest number. Here, 2012. Find the difference between the highest and the lowest number manufactured. So we take the highest number. That's 5080. According to the table, lowest number is 2000. Eight. So we subtract. So when you subtract, you get the difference. So 10 minus 8, 2, this becomes 7. 0, 5 minus 2, you get 3. So that means 3072 shirts. Find the total number of shirts manufactured in 2012 and 2011. So total means you have to take the addition. 2012, that's 5,080 shirts. And 2011, 2008 shirts. So now take the addition. 0 plus 8, 8, 8, 0, 5 plus 2, you get 7. So altogether, 7,088 shirts are there. Now look at this question. Another table is given. So this is about details about farmers who provided potatoes. So farmer A, B, C, D, E, F and potatoes in kilograms. Who brought the highest mass of potatoes? So look at this side and see what's the highest number? This one. So that means farmer D. Who brought the lowest mass of potatoes? Look at the lowest number. So lowest number is E. So that means farmer E. Look at this question. Find the difference between masses of potatoes brought by farmer A and B. So we have to take the difference. So what's the mass of farmer A? 10,800. Mass of farmer B, 
8450. So we have to take the difference. So when you subtract, you get the difference. So 0, 10 minus 5, you get 5. This becomes 7. 7 minus 4, 3. 10 minus 8, that's 2. 2350 is the difference. This is in kilograms. So we can write 2350 kilograms. What is the extra amount that farmer F brought compared to farmer E? So F and E. So F is 7080 and mass of farmer E, that's 5350. This is about mass of potatoes. So we'll take the difference. So subtract 0, 8 minus 5, you get 3. 10 minus 3, you get 7. And this becomes 6. 6 minus 5, 1. So this is the extra amount, 1730 kilograms. Find the total mass of potatoes brought by farmers A, B, C. So total means you have to take the addition. So what's farmer A? That's 10,000. 800. Farmer B, 8,450. And farmer C, 6,320. So you need to take the total. The total mass is 0, 5 plus 2, you get 7. 8 plus 4, 12. 12 plus 3, 15. And 1 remaining here. 8 plus 1, 9. 9 plus 6, 15 and 1 remaining, 1 and 1 becomes 25. So what's the total mass? 25,570 kilograms. Following table shows details about the favorite sports of 140 students. Sport and the number of students. Cricket, football, volleyball, badminton and hockey. What is the sport that least number of students like? Which one is the least number? Lowest number? 20. That's hockey. What is the sport that the most number of students like? What's the highest number? That's football. Find the total number of students who like cricket and hockey. So total means you have to take the addition. So number of students who like cricket is 30. Number of students who like hockey, that's 20. So what's the total? Add these two. So you get 50 students like cricket and hockey. How many more students like football than volleyball? So there you have to take the difference. Number of students like football, that's 40. Number of students like volleyball, that's 25. So you can find out extra amount by taking the difference. 10 minus 5 is 5. This is 3 minus 2, 1. So there are 15 students more. Are there that they like football than volleyball? What is the highest height of a plant? Now another table. Following table shows about height of mango plants in a plant nursery. So height is given in centimeters. So what is the highest height of a plant? Look at the table. So what is the highest number? 80. 80 centimeters. What is the lowest height of the plant? It's given 68 centimeters. How many plants are above 75? 
above 75 means you can take 76 and 80. So number of plants with 76 centimeters, that's 12. Number of plants with 80 centimeters, that's 10. So what's the total? You just add these two. You get 22. Total number of plants that are above 75 centimeters. How many plants are below 72? Below means you can't take 72. Less than that, you can take 70 and 68. So number of plants with 70 centimeter height, that's 23. And plants with 68 centimeter height, that's 20. So you take the addition. So altogether 43 plants below 72 centimeters. Following table shows details about income and expenditure in a family. So this is in rupees for food, clothes, rent, education, other and saving. Find the total income of that family. So how we find out the total income? It's already given. So when you add the total is given. So that's the total income of that family. 24,600 rupees. Find the total expenditure in that family. So you have to add all these together or what's the easiest way to do? You know the total income. When you subtract the savings, you get all the other information. So the, these are expenditure. So we'll find out total income. That's 24,600. And total savings, 2,200. When you subtract these two, you get the total expenditure. So 0, 0, 6 minus 2, 4. And 4 minus 2, 2, 2. So what's the expenditure, total expenditure? 22,400 rupees. Find the ratio between expenditure for clothes and education. Clothes, that's 4,800. And for education, 1,200. So first we can divide by 100. Cross out the two zeros. So you get 48 and 12. Then you can divide by 12. Both sides, you get 12 times 4. You get 48, 12 times 1. So what's the ratio? 4 to 1. Find the ratio between other expenditure and education. Other expenditure. So that's 3,200. And education, that's 1,200. Now try to simplify. You can first divide by 100. Cross out the two zeros. Then, how can you simplify? You can divide by 4. 4 times 8, 32. 4 times 3, 12. So the ratio is 8 to 3. If half of the amount from amount spent for clothes are saved, find the total amount of saving. So here for clothes, that's 4,800. So the expenditure for clothes, 4,800. So what's the half of that amount? Because they want to save half of that amount as savings. So if you take half that, half of this, that means you have to divide this by 2, you get 2,400 rupees. Now how do you find out the total savings? Total savings is this earlier 2,200 and this half 2,400 altogether you get 4,600 rupees. 
we look at this one. The table shows the TV sales in a week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and number of TV sales. Which day had the highest number of sales? Look at the values and see which one is the highest. 30, that's Saturday. Which day had the lowest number of sales? Which one? So 20, that's Wednesday. What is the total number of sales on Wednesday and Saturday? Total means you add the two numbers. Number of sales on Wednesday, that's 20. And Saturday, that's 30. So you need to add both these, you get 50. That's the total number. Find the ratio between number of TV sets sold on Tuesday and Saturday. Tuesday, that's 24. Saturday, that's 30. You can divide this by 6. 6 times 4, 24. 6 times 5, 30. So that's the simplest form, 4 to 5 ratio. Now we'll look at how we interpret data using picture graphs. So following picture graph shows about type of newspapers sold in a selling outlet in one day. So type P, Q, R, S, T. And here this represent 100 newspapers. So here can you see half of that? So what it means? Half means 50. And what about this one? This is quarter. One fourth of that, quarter of hundred, that's twenty-five. Which newspaper has the highest sales? So we can see newspaper S is getting the highest sales. Which newspaper has the lowest sales? So we can see this one is the lowest, type Q. How many art type newspapers sold? This is 100, 200, 300 and this is 25, 325. How many extra S type paper sold compared to P newspapers? S and P. So what is S? 100, 200, 300, 400 and this 50, 450 minus in P type, that's 100, 200, 300, 400. So you subtract 400. So that's extra 50 newspapers. Find the total number of newspapers sold on that day. So we need to add all together. What's the number of T, P type? 1, 2, 3, 4. That means 400. Type Q, 225. So you need to remember this is 1 fourth of 100, that's 25. R type, 300 plus 25, 325. S type, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 450. And number of T type, this is 200 and this 50. 250. So we'll find out the total. So you need to add all together. So when you are adding 5 and 5, 10. 1 remaining. And here this is 3 plus 2, 5. 5 and 5, 10. 10 plus 5, 15. And take 1 here. 4 plus 1, 5. 5 plus 2, 7. 7 plus 3, 10. 10 plus 4, 14. And 2, that's 16. 1650 altogether. If the vendor gets 12 rupees by selling a paper, find the total amount he gets. So he gets 
12 times 1650 rupees because there are 1650 newspapers for each one he gets 12 rupees so we need to multiply by 12 so we'll multiply 1650 multiplied by 12 so 10 and 2 multiplied by 1 0, 5, 6, 1 Multiply by 2, 2 times 5, 10, 2 times 6, 12 plus 1, 13, and 2 times 1, 2 plus 1, 3. So when you add it, you get this much. So 19,800 rupees. Look at this picture graph. It shows the number of shirts were manufactured in several years in a certain company. So this one circle means 100. If it's half, that means 50. But there are no half circles. Find the number of shirts manufactured in 2016. 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 into 100, 400. Find the number of shirts manufactured in 2011. 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 into 100, 400. Which year was the highest number of shirts are manufactured? So here, this one. So that means 2012. Find the number of shirts manufactured in 2013. 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 times 100, 400. Find the total number of shirts that are manufactured in 2015 and 2014. So we need to add it together. So what's the number in 2015? 1, 2, 3, 4, that's 400. In 2014, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that's 500. So the total is the addition. So you get 900 shirts. The following picture graph shows the number of shirts. So same thing, find the ratio between number of shirts manufactured in 2015 and 2012. So what's the number in 2015? That's 400. Number in 2012? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's 700. You can divide this by 100. That means you cross out the two zeros so you get 4 to 7 is a ratio another picture graph so this picture graph shows the number of fruit juice bottles produced by a company orange mango pineapple wood apple avocado watermelon so one means thousand bottles and Find the number of orange flavored bottles. Here, there's a half. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven times thousand, seven thousand. And this is half means five hundred. Seven thousand, five hundred bottles. Find the number of watermelon flavored bottles. Thousand and thousand, two thousand. Which fruit juice bottle produced the most? Look at the graph. You get avocado. So here you can write avocado there. How many more avocado bottles produced than orange juice bottles? So we found number of avocado bottles. Did we find out before? No. We didn't find out. So what's the number of avocado bottles? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Again count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that's 9,000. Number of orange bottles? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and half 7,500. So when you take the difference, you get 
extra number of bottles. So subtract 5 and 5, 10 and here 1 and another 1. When you add it, you get 9,000. So 1,500 extra bottles, avocado bottles are there compared to orange bottles. Following picture graph shows the amount of vegetables brought to a market by farmers. Cabbage, beans, carrot, beetroot, sweet potatoes and brinjols. Find the total mass of cabbage. So one circle means 50 kilos. How many circles are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 times 50, 400 kilograms. Find the total mass of beans. This one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 circles. 5 times 50, 250 kilos. What are the vegetables brought with equal masses? So you have to look at the chart. Can you see these two are equal? So that means carrot and cabbage. Carrot and cabbage. And what else? These two? These two? That's beans and beetroot. Beans and beetroot. If one kilogram of cabbage is 80 rupees, find the total amount gained from that. So cabbage altogether, we found 400 kilograms. So 400 into 80 rupees. One kilo is 80, 400 kilos you multiply by 400. Three zeros. And 8 times 4, 32. So, thir so 32,000 rupees. If 1 kilo of carrot is 120 rupees, find the total amount gained from that. So carrot, same amount. Cabbage and carrot, same amount. That, that's 400 kilos. 1 kilo is... 120 rupees. What about 400 kilos? Multiply by 400. Three zeros are there. And 4 times 12, you get 48. So 48,000 rupees. Following picture graph shows about type of soap sold in a supermarket. Sandalwood, rose, jasmine, lavender, velvet and gardenia. Find the number of sandalwood soaps sold. Now this triangle represent 40. Half of that is 20. So number of soaps for sandalwood 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 times 40. That's 200. Find the number of jasmine soaps sold. Jasmine 1, 2, 3. That's 3 times 40, that's 120, 120 plus 20, 140. Find the number of lavender soap sold. Lavender here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 times 40, you get 280. What are the soaps sold with equal number? When you look at the graph, where you get equal number? These two. This and this. So that's lavender. And gardenia. The following picture graph shows the marks obtained for mathematics test by students. Grade A, B, C, S and W. Write down number of students represented by 
this one. Now the number is given. From that you should be able to find out what is this means. Now think about this one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 50 and 5 there. So 50 divided by 5. That means 1 is 10. Here 4 is there. This becomes 40. 40 divided by 4. You get 10. So this means 10. Find the total number of students who did the test. So you need to add all together. So we can add all these numbers. This is 5. And here 4 and 4, 8. 8 plus 5, 13. 13 plus 6, 19. 19 plus 5, 14. 245. So the total number you can straight away write down that's 145. How many students got A's and B's? A's 40 students. B's 45 students. So all together you can add it and write down 95 students got A's and B's. Find the total number of students who passed the test. Who passed the test. Now we know total number. Total number was 145. 145. And here if you can subtract doubly this one you can find out the past students. S is also simple pass. So you can subtract this 50 from the total. So what you get here? 5 and 9. 9 plus 5, 14. So 95 students pass the mathematics exam. The following picture graph shows the number of students who passed each subject in A-level class. Combined Maths, Biology, Chemistry, Physics, English and ICT. Find the number of students who passed in Combined Maths. Now, you have to look at carefully. This represents 8 students. 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 times 8. 32 students passed the Combined Maths. Find the number of students who passed in Biology. 1, 2, 3. 3 times 8. 24 students. Find the number of students who passed in ICT exam. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 times 8. 64. If 46 students did combine maths, how many students failed the test? Now we found out. How many students pass the exam? 32. So we can subtract 32 from 46 to get the number of failed students. Altogether 46 and 32 pass the exam. So when you subtract you get 4 and 1. So 14 students fail the maths exam, combined maths exam. Look at this part. If 53 students did biology, how many students failed the test? So altogether 53. How many passed the biology exam? That's we found before. 3 times 8, 24. So you subtract 24. You get 9 plus 4, 13 and 2. So 29 students failed biology exam. Hobbies of several students showed in the following picture graph. So this means 8. Co half means 4 and quarter means 2. So 8 divided by 4, that's 2. How many students love music? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 8 times 5 and this is 4. 
So, 8 times 5, 40. 40 plus 4, 44. How many students like to swim? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 times 8. And then half is there. Half means? Half means 4. 8 times 5, 40. 40 plus 4, 44. How many students like sports than music? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 times 8, 64 for sports. And for music, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 8 times 5, 40, that's 44. So what's the difference? So you subtract 64 minus 44, you get 20 students. Now we'll look at the exercises in your textbook. So exercise 23.1. The following table provides the number of tri shows that were registered in a certain province during the last five years. Answer the following questions based on the table. In which year was the least number of tri shows registered? So you have to find out the least number. So 930, that means in 2000. Nine. In which year was the most number of trijos re registered? That means look at the table and see what's the highest. Highest number is this. That's in 2013. How many more trijos were registered in 2013 than 2009? So we have to take the difference. So 2013 is 2,240 and in 2009, that's 930. So we need to subtract 0, 1 and 3, here 1. So that means 1,310 trishows. Write down any special fact that can be stated according to the given data regarding the registration of tri shows in this province. What can you say? So when you look at the year, when the year increases, the number of tri shows also increases. So we can write, so what's the special fact that can be stated? When year increases, number of tri shows also increases. Look at this one. The number of kilograms of Bombay onions sold during the first six months of the year by a certain wholesale dealer is given in the following table. Amount in kilograms. Answer the following questions based on the data in the table. In which month was the greatest quantity of Bombay onions sold? Greatest and how much was sold during this month? So which month first? Look at carefully and see which one is the highest. That means April. So what's the amount? That's 27,200 kilograms. The wholesale dealer claims that the quantity of Bombay onions sold each month at his shopping center is more than 22,000 kilos. Write down your views regarding this statement. So we'll see whether it's true. This one is low that, lower than 22,000. This is okay. And this is also lower. And this is higher for other months. So most of the months, more than 22,000. And this is slightly 
lower. So you can say the statement is true. So we can say four months in four months the amount is more than twenty two thousand kilos except only two months. Two months. So we can say the statement is true. How many more kilograms of Bombay onions were sold in April than in March? So we have to take the difference. So April 27,200. In March, 21,850. So when you take the difference, you get the extra amount. 0, 10 minus 5, 5. This becomes 1. 11 minus 8, 3. And this becomes 6. 6 minus 1, 5. And see whether your subtraction is true. 0, 10. And 9 plus 3, 12. And here, 7. Yeah, so 5,350 kilos extra in April. An employee of this shopping center states that the quantity of Bombay onions sold during the month of April and May exceeds 53,000 kilograms. Show that this statement is true. So we'll see April and May. April 27,200. May, that's 25,950. So all together, that's the sum. You get 53,150 kilos. So what can you say about 53 kilos? It's more than 53,000 kilos. So you can say 53,150 kilos is more than 53,000. So the statement is true. Write down a probable reason why the sales during the months of April and May exceed the sales during the other months. What can you say? April, New Year season. So maybe because of New Year season, the sales are higher. So we can say New Year because of New Year season. Look at this question. A certain news item that appeared in a well-known newspaper in year 2014 is given in the following box. The quantity of fresh milk that is produced in several Sri Lankan districts has gradually increased during the past several years. Based on the data in the following table, determine whether the above news item is true. What can you say when the, the year increases? This is increasing. So the statement is true. It says has gradually increased during the past several years. So we can write down the statement is true. So I'll write here one. Statement is true because 
when year increases the production also increases second one what is the total production of fresh milk in liters during the given four years so that means you have to add all together so we can add it here 0 here 0 6 plus 1 7 7 plus 4 11 11 plus 7 80 and you can take one here 4 plus 1 5 then 9 plus 9 18 18 plus 6 you get 24 so put 4 and you can take 2 here so 2 plus 2 4 4 plus 1 5 5 plus 1 6 6 plus 2 8 again check this one 2 plus 2 4 4 plus 1 5 5 plus 1 6 6 plus 2 8 so what's the value this is in liters 800 45,800 liters is the total production. And part 3 is the milk production of year 2013 more than twice the milk production of year 2010. So we'll find out. 2010 that's 160. 3,100 multiply by 2 and see multiply by 2 you get 200 this is 6 2 times 6 12 and 1 remaining 2 times 1 2 plus 1 3 so this is 326,200 but the value here is 290,000 700. What can you say about that? That's not more than twice. So you can write this value is more than the given value in 2013. So you can say this is not true. This is not true. Exercise 23.2 The number of child entry tickets that were issued by the zoo on the four Sundays of the month of January is represented in the following picture graph. First Sunday, second Sunday, third Sunday and fourth Sunday. 100 child entry tickets are represented by this symbol. This means 100. Half means 50. On which Sunday of the month has the most number of child entry tickets been issued? Look at the picture graph and see. This is the highest. That's first Sunday. On which Sunday of the month has the least number of child entry tickets been issued? Which one is the lowest? This one. So that's third Sunday. How many child entry tickets were issued on the third Sunday of the month? So third Sunday is this one. One, two, three, four, five. 1 represent 100, 100 times 5, that's 500. How many child entry tickets were issued in total during the four Sundays in the month of January? So we have to take the total. So we'll see what's the total? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 
And this half and this half just one. So all together 24. But each symbol represents 100. So what's the total? 24 times 100. That's 2400. The time of arrival on a certain day of the grade 6 students of a certain class is represented in the following picture graph. So here this symbol means 4 students. Half means 2. Quarter means 1. How many students arrived during the period from 7-5 to 7-10? Which one? 7-5 to 7, 10. Full circle and a quarter. Full circle means 4. This means, this is 4. And quarter means 1. 4 plus 1, that's 5 students. How many students arrived during the period from 7, 15 to 7, 30? 7, 15 to, that means all together. 7, 15 means here. Up to 730 means all three together. So we'll count how many full circles are there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that's 6 times 4. And there's a half circle. Half circle means that's 2. And there's a quarter of a circle. That means 1. So all together. 6 times 4, 24. 24 plus 3, 27 students. On that day, no student arrived before 7, 5. And by 7, 30 a.m., all the students were present in the class. How many students are there in total in the class? So that means we have to add all together. Now we found out this is 27. So if we can add that, this one to this amount, you can find the total. So 27 plus, we'll count how many in these two. Two full circles means 4 into 2, 8. And this half, half means 2. And there's another quarter. Quarter means 1. So how many all together? 8 plus 2, 10. 10 plus 1, 11. 27 and 11. 38 students are there all together. Question number 3. When a grade 6 student is present in class on all 5 days of a week, he is awarded one star. The following picture graph represents the number of stars that four friends received for their attendance during the 14 weeks of the first term. A star is not received when the attendance during a week is less than five days. Five days are represented by the symbol, this one. So this means five. Of these four friends who receive stars for attending school on all five days of each of the 14 weeks. Here yeah, we'll see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So that means Kumudita. We can write Kumudita received stars for the whole 14 weeks. During how many weeks did Malita attend school on all five days? So we need to count stars for Malita. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So 12 weeks. If a student attended school on 69 days, how many stars should be drawn to represent his attendance. 
69 days means how many weeks are there? 69 days. Now this is week means 5 day. So you can divide by 5 and see how many weeks are there. 5 times 1 for 19 that's 5 times 3. 15 and 4 days remaining. 13 weeks and 4 days remaining. 13 weeks means 13 stars. This should be 13 stars. And for 4 days, can you get a star? You are not getting half of a star. So that means only 13 weeks means you can get 13 stars only. The number of registered letters received by a certain post office to be posted during the five days of a certain week is represented in the following picture graph. So this means six letters. If it's half, that's three. If the cost of registering a letter is 30 rupees, what is the income received by the post office on Monday? as registration fees. Monday, how many letters? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 means 5 times 6. And there's half means 3. So altogether, 30 and 3, 33 letters. Each one cost 30 rupees. So what's the Total cost, cost for registration, that's 33 times 30 rupees. So you get this one in rupees, 0, 3 times 3, 9 and 9, 990 rupees. Then second part, name the day on which the income from registering letters was highest and find the relevant income. So which one is highest? That's Wednesday. So what's the amount? Wednesday. So we'll count how many letters? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 6 times 6, 36 and there's another half. Half means 3. 36 plus 3, 39. So what's the cost for registration? So the post office get each one is 30 rupees. So multiply by 30. 0, 3 times 9, 27. And 3 times 3, 9. 9 plus 2, 11. So 1,170 rupees. How much did the post office earn during the five days by registering letters? So we need to find all together how many letters are there. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, and half. 24 means 24 times 6 and there's half. Half means 3. So what's the value? Multiply by 6 first. 6 times 4, 24. And 6 times 2, 12. 12 plus 2, 14. Plus 3, you get 147. Now each one, the cost is 30 rupees. So the cost is 30 rupees into 147. 0, 3 times 7, 21. 2 remaining. 3 times 4, 12. 12 plus 2, 14. And 1 remaining. 
3 times 1, 3 plus 1, you get 4. So, 4,410 rupees. The number of glasses of fruit drinks sold at a certain stall on a certain day is represented in the following picture graph. So, this one glass means 4. Which type of drink has been sold the most? So, we can see this is the most number. That's wood apple. If the price of glass of wood apple drink is 12 rupees and a glass of avocado drink is 12 rupees, how much more was earned from wood apple drinks than from avocado? So that means we can find out the difference between wood apple and the avocado. These two. Now when you take that one, no need to find the total and subtract. And we can straight away see there's two extra. Two glasses extra. So two glasses extra, that means each big glass means four glasses. That's eight extras. This is extra. So that means each one 12 rupees. So you can multiply by 12 to get the extra money. So extra money is 8 times 12. That's in rupees, 8 times 2, 16, and 1 room remaining. 8 times 1, 8, plus 1, 9. So, 96 rupees extra. That's from wood apple. If 40 glasses of each type of drink had been prepared that day, find the number of glasses of drink of each type that remained unsold at the end of the day. Represent this information in a table. So that means 40 glasses means 40 divided by 4. That means 10. If we take mango. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 is there. So what's the remaining? 10 minus 6. That's 4. So each one is 4 glasses. So that means... 16 glasses remain. Watermelon. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 10 minus 5, that's 5. 5 times 4, 20 glasses remaining. Orange, same thing. 5 times 4, 20. This one, wood dapple, 9, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that means 1 remaining. 1 times 4, that's 4. Avocado. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 10 minus 7, that's 3. 3 times 4, you get 12. So this is the information. So this is the unsold glasses. So, we covered all theory related to data interpretation. So, in this lesson, we discussed how we can interpret data using tables and picture graphs. So, we can, by looking at the picture graphs or the tables, you can compare all data. So, this is an important lesson in statistics. So, we are continuing this lesson in grade 7, 8 till you do O levels and also if you are doing A level combined maths, we are doing statistics. So, practice and see how you can interpret data using tables and picture graphs.